the Zoom call goes in and out. But what is clear, an orphanage in one of the most besieged cities in Ukraine, Kherson, is doing its best to make the children feel safe. All 50 of them. They range in age from 3 to 17 years old. The man in charge, Vladimir Sagaidok. His daughter, Kate Fativa, on the call from a different location in Kherson, translates. They are afraid of war, but they are happy. When they are with my um, father and uh, his colleagues, they are always happy. Happy despite the sunlight blocked out. They closed the windows. To prevent light through the windows, attracting the attention of Russian soldiers. Do you think that they are in a lot of danger? Yes, of course. All our country is in danger. We can't do anything because we are circled by Russian um, soldiers. We are just blocked and always bombed. Russian troops began moving on Kherson in the pre-dawn hours of February 24th, eventually surrounding the southern seaport near the Black Sea. The city has been under constant bombardment since. There are a lot of uh, military Russian machines. Vladimir says he and two teachers are the only ones looking after all these children. The rest couldn't get to work because of uh, army war. Kate, now speaking for herself, says that with the Russian advance on the city, there's no way to escape. It's very dangerous because they may be killed, really. Vladimir says at the sound of explosions, he moves the children down to the basement of the orphanage. Why did you not leave before? before the bombing started. We didn't expect it would be so aggressive. Is there anything people around the world right now can do to help you? (laughs) At first, it is uh, peace. Peace for children without parents in a city under siege. Jason, I know you spoke with this group yesterday. Now that reports are in that Russia has taken the city, have you been in touch with them? I've attempted to be in touch with them, have reached out and have not gotten a response. And that very well may be because there's trouble with communication or because they are just overwhelmed right now uh, out of concern from friends around the world for this orphanage. Uh, So we just don't know. And we also don't know what what the real implications are of the city they're in being the first to apparently fall to the Russians. I also think, Jason, A major question is, with major communications towers bombed out, no TV, no radio in some places, how are people even making plans, whether it is to go across the country, across a border, or just to check on a family member? Well, surprisingly enough, the communication systems, the Internet, cellular networks, they've been operable. And it was predicted from the very beginning, even before the invasion happened, that those would be the first things to be knocked out. So that said, the situation is evolving very quickly. And in terms of making plans for the future, I mean, the folks that I was speaking to at the orphanage, they really can't make any plans, they say, because it's just too dangerous for them to go anywhere. They're in communication with charities. There's a charity in Poland that wants to bring, take care of them, wants to bring all these children in, but they're just not away safely to get them there. That's the situation they're in right now. We've seen so many stories of heroism, and then you remember that there are some people there not by choice. They're just a few years old looking up to the adults around them saying, you know, keep me safe. Jason Bellini, really, really touching story there. Um, And we wish them all the best. Please keep us posted on them.